this video is going to introduce two additional boards that I physically have in my hands. I'm going to quickly review them here online first, and then we're going to go to the bench and I'm going to quickly show you how to use them, hook them up, and for the last board, I'm also going to show you how to reprogram it if you have one that is not for the resolution of your panel. So let's get started. Hi, welcome to the breadboard. I'm Peter. And if you remember from our last videos, uh, the board that you can see up on the screen behind me right now is the one that I was using to hook up to a Raspberry Pi, have it drive a 1366 by 768 display. A lot of you are asking about how to pick a different board. Uh, can you reprogram this one, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the answer to a can you reprogram it is yes, you can, but you do need to either build or buy a special programmer. It goes through the VGA connector and uh, I think connects to an I2C um, E squared PROM that is connected to the controller chip on the board. But I've also um, ordered a couple of other boards to use uh, with some additional cables that may be easier to handle. So what I will do is I'll show you what those are first, and then we'll go to the bench and uh, we'll try and actually demonstrate them being used. I do have some different resolution displays, so we can actually see them working for real. So first of all, before we go there, though, I want to show you the alternate that I found for this particular display. Um, this one was the one that we had, as I said, 1366 by 768. Um, the actual size of the panel, I know it says 15.6 inch here, but that really is irrelevant. As I showed you in the first video, um, I used it with a 15.6, uh, a 14 inch and a 10 inch panel, and it doesn't really care because the refresh rates are the same, the resolution is the same. The only bit that really mattered was, in this case, whether it was a 6-bit panel or an 8-bit panel, and whether it had one channel of LVDS or two channels. Uh, in the case of all the boards that we saw in the first video, they were all single-channel 6-bit boards. So, what do you do if you want something else? Well, you can search for differently configured boards. You, when you order these, um, some of the ones you find, they will be available in different resolutions. For instance, uh, this one I found here, uh, it's the exact same board, but basically it's been programmed to work with a PS2, PS3, or an Xbox 360, which probably, even though it doesn't say here, probably means that it is programmed to be a 1920 by 1080 or perhaps a 720p display. Um, for gaming, of course, you'd really want to have the higher resolution. It doesn't actually say in this ad that I've seen. The price is 2103 right now, slightly cheaper than the first one I showed you, but then the first one included a remote control as well. Uh, this one just includes um, the little keypad and the AV input. Now, the one thing that I found here that was of interest, though, is that in the description, it provided a link to... Um, the binary files for a whole host of different resolutions. And as I said, you've got to get a special programmer, and I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I was just going to show you what was in that zip file. I've just, I brought it down, a little bit of Chinese, which I can't read, or uh, kanji or whatever. I'm not sure what that is anyway. Um, but you've got a whole host of different files for different resolutions. The bottom here, you can see you've got 24-bit, uh, which means it's actually 8 Sorry, two. Yes, it's 24 bit, but that's going to be uh, 8 bit per color. Um, 1024 by 600. We've got all sorts of different resolutions here 1024 by 768, 800 by 600, 1920 by 1200. So there's quite a host of different resolutions, and some of the other parameters are probably um, slight variants of the board. But what you have here is a huge amount of binary files that you could potentially program onto the board to set it to the resolution of your screen. Now, it's easier just to get the board already done that way, but if you've got one and maybe your panel finally dies and you want to use it with another one, potentially there is a way to reconfigure it to use that other panel. Um, if I can figure this out and get it going, I will show you in a future video. All right, so other boards. Um, well, these two, first of all, 
there's a user's guide for it that you can find. I'll provide links in the description. Um, this describes all the connectors, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the next controller that I have now that's just recently come in is this one. And I ordered it with a 40 pin 8 bit um, connector, but it was for the same resolution display 1366 by 768. Um, the difference about this board is one, it doesn't have an infrared receiver, although I think you could probably add one. But secondly, it has a factory settings menu that theoretically should allow you to change the parameters for the panel with the exception of the resolution. You can't change the resolution. So again, the same programming technique is used for this one as it is for the first board in that you program it through the VGA connector on two of the pins that are normally not used and you can reprogram the flash with a new binary file. I haven't found a source for the binary files for this one yet, but I'm sure they're available. But again, um, the benefit of using this one is at least it does have that factory settings menu. So slightly better and about the same price. This one is $27. Um, these other two were $21 and $27 with the extra pieces. So similar price. And again, uh, as I found a user manual for this one, there is a user's guide for this one. It uses a slightly different processor, um, image processor slash microcontroller on there. Um, but there's a lot of information in here for it as well. So if I look at this board, one of the additional features that are on this board, which is not on the first board, is this additional chip here. This is actually taking the audio from the HDMI or from the PC input, and it's a little audio amplifier. So you can just connect a couple of 8-ohm speakers, and away you go with the sound as well, which is really cool. First board doesn't have that. All right, so that's that board. Now, the third board is uh, here, which funny shape. Uh, you can get them in slightly different shapes. Uh, the one I got initially came with this um, cold cathode fluorescent driver. It's only a single channel one. Um, I made a slight mistake in the ordering and I got it with a single channel. But the board, the display that I'm going to use it with, actually needs a four channel one, which I found. It's available. Um, and the nice thing about this particular board is that number one, it has a, let me just bring up a picture, better picture. It has a TV input. So you can connect an antenna to this and it's got a TV tuner built in. So you can scan the channels and watch TV with it. Um, the other thing that it's got, oh, it's got the audio amplifier as well. So it's got speaker output and it also has a USB connector. And the real benefit of this one is that um, there is a set of files available for reprogramming this for different resolutions. Also comes with a full remote control and it does have a factory settings menu that allows you to go in there and easily um, burn a new piece of firmware in. Now, if you put a USB key in, which has got the existing firmware in there, it'll just ignore it. But if you put in a different one, it will automatically burn it on power up. So just be aware of that. But if you want to force it from an existing menu, then you there is a factory settings menu that allows you to reprogram it as well. Um, composite, sorry, it's got... Um, Composite video input, color video, and as well as audio input. It's got an HDMI input and a VGA input. Um, so it doesn't have DVI. Um, and then you can get variations with um, LED or CCFL boards, etc. The one that I've got only had a single CCFL, but you can get other ones as well. So for instance, here is one which doesn't have anything. Uh, this one is designed to go to a LCD panel that has a CCFL backlight. The reason I know this is because this is a 30 pin connector. Um, the third board that I found is the one that I should have ordered originally. Um, exactly the same board, same cable. This is a full um, 8 bit 2 channel. So it will handle the higher resolutions as well as the higher colors. And it has a 4 channel CCFL driver on here, uh, which is exactly what I would need for this other board. Um, anyway, the software is available for these. If you just scroll down here, they actually provide this link to the manual and they provide a link to the software that you can download. Now, just be aware you need the one that's 2019. Um, there were, I found a couple of references where they went to 2018 versions of the firmware. That doesn't work. You need the 2019 one. And well, I'll show you later in the video how to actually reprogram this when we get to that. So, 
um, that's all very well and good. How do you know which cable you want to buy? Okay, so I have a number of pictures, close ups, um, and I also have um, a Word document with links for the different displays that I've got currently. So the way that I look up the panel and find out exactly what I need is first of all, I get the actual model number of my panel. So my 10 inch one, for example, is an LP 101 WH one. Um, I go to painloop.com. I'm sure that's supposed to be like panel look, but they didn't want two L's in it. And if I open this, this is for that particular display. This is the one that had the broken backlight. So it tells me the size, it tells me the resolution. So you need this piece here to feed into your search criteria. The actual size is irrelevant. The next thing you need is how many pins the connector needs. It's a 40 pin, just a smaller one. And it's a single channel, six bit cable is what you need. Um, the last piece you need is the voltage for the display. And in this case, it's a 3.3 volt display. Uh, and that's all the information you need uh, to pick your controller. And the first controller I have here was exactly that, all right? It's got a 1366 by 768 um, resolution been programmed into it. And the cable, there we go. There's a picture of the cable and you can see here, it doesn't have all of the um, connections. Actually, I think they've plugged that cable in backwards. They have. <laughs> Don't trust the pictures all the time. Pin one is over here. And that's where the power starts is over here. They've plugged that cable in backwards. Not very clever of that picture. Anyway, um, so this is the control board and then you would just plug it into this here. You can see right there, it actually marks it as pin one. So that is the one that I would use for that 10 inch panel. Now let's just look at a couple of the other panels that I've got just to go through a couple of examples so you can see how to find your own. So let's go to, let's just randomly pick, I don't know, this one. So this is a, um, it's actually a, what size screen is this? 15.6 inch screen. So this is a LP156WH2. I'm not going to take all of it because there are variations, but I wanted to demonstrate something here. Um, we'll go back to the panel searcher and up here, we'll just put in that panel um, product number. And you'll find in this case that we'll probably get a list of panels. There we go. And you can see the ending of them, they're all different. So we go back to our panel that I had. There we go. And the one I've got is a TLQB. So we look for TLQB. There it is right there. So that is the one that we need. Now you need to make sure you get the right one because as you, if you watch my previous video where we just talked about LVDS, I almost made a mistake on picking a controller that was going to handle four lanes of LVDS and it wasn't necessary for the board. So it's, you know, versions and things like that can make a big difference. So make sure you get the full one, um, full model number for the panel, including any bits that are in brackets at the end of the model number. So here we go. Tells us the size, but as I said, the size doesn't matter. Uh, tells us the resolution. So 1366 by 768. Um, so we need that information in our search criteria. We need the fact that it is 40 pin again, and it's a one channel six bit again, and it's 3.3 volt, and it's also LED. So with those parameters, those are exactly the same parameters as we used for the 10 point, the 10 inch display. So you need the exact same board. Now, what happens if we have a board that is a different resolution? Um, so I actually happen to have one here and I've actually ripped apart one of my perfectly good displays, my um, PC LED displays so that we can actually have a look. Um, this one is um, 1680 by 1050 and this is a M201 EW02 V1. Let's just copy that and we'll do another quick example. I'll go up here. 
enter in the product code. Remember, this is a V1. All right, so we've got all these different versions. The V8 is the one that has a four channel. See, it's 16.7 million colors, huge contrast ratio. Um, the one we want is a V1. See the difference in contrast ratio. So it's a slightly different board. CCFL. So it's got a cold cathode backlight. Anyway, that's the one we want is the V1. So we go in here. Okay, here we go. Now, as you can see here, 20.1 inch display, 1680 by 1050. So that's the resolution we would need. Um, 16.7 million colors. This is a 30 pin, which actually, even by the fact it's 30 pin, tells us it's probably a CCFL. Uh, it's a two channel 8 bit. They need the 8 bits times three, you know, RGB to get the 16.7 million colors. So this means we're going to have a different cable. This is going to be a fully populated. Um, the cable that goes on the controller is going to have pretty much every single connection used on it. Um, and it tells us here it's a CCFL with four pieces. Now, if you put all that information into Google, um, let's actually try it right now. So we want 1680 by 1050. Now let's put in four CCFL. And we want uh, LCD controller. And we want two channel eight bit. Let's just see what that comes up with. And here we go. So we have a number of different choices here. Alibaba, eBay, AliExpress, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got quite a few to pick from. Now, I happen to have done this search and found um, this board, which happens to fit mine, and I can reprogram it. Um, actually, this one is a 6-bit 30-pin. That's not the one I want. That Two-channel 8-bit. So this is the exact one that would work with the exception of the resolution. And it's very easy to program this, so they really don't bother providing them all with different resolutions. And if we look down in the specifications, um, it's not really going into that because they do provide all these files for you to program it. Uh, it tells you down here how you do that. So this one here would fit perfectly with that panel. Now, one other panel that I have, um, which is somewhere in between, is this one here, which is a 1600 by 900. So it's not a full... Uh, HD display, and that is this um, LP156WD1. If we search for that one, now we just need to quickly check what was the two suffixes after that. So we had a TLB2. So as you can see here, again, we get quite a list of that part number, and we want the TLB2 one, which is right here. So we go into there, and we find this one. So again, the resolution 1600 by 900. LVDS two channel six bit this time, so it's only a 262k color panel, and it's a 40 pin connector, and it's still 3.3 volts. Um, and again, confirming it's an LED panel. So if you put that into your search criteria, you would end up with 1600. by 900 two channel six bit i believe i think that's what it said yeah two channel six bit 40 pin connector you can put the that in there as well if you wanted to and here we go so now we have um some examples of some panels that would work for that as well Right from Amazon, from Banggood. So we're going to Banggood. Here's the cable that you would want. And you can see most of the pins are populated. Um, if you have a look closer at this one, you'll probably find that there are some gaps in it. Um, right there, there's some missing. And right there. If I just add Banggood to this. I bought my, my panels from Banggood. I, they did not... Um, send me these to, for free or anything like that. 
So this is not a sponsored video or anything. That's completely irrelevant. So what I end up with is potentially this board, if I can get it at the right resolution. Um, which one do I have in here? This is the 156XW02. I put it into panellook.com and search for that. And we should find that that's what that resolution of that board is. So the one that I have with me right now will not work for that 1600 by 900. Um, but this one will because I can program it to be whatever I want it to be because they provide the files to download. So, all right, let's now look at just some of the cables that we need for this. Okay, so here's some close up of some of the cables. So this one, um, if we try and figure out just by looking at the cable exactly what it's for. Well, here's our 40 pin connector. This is for the power for the LED backlight. So we know it's an LED backlight cable. And we've got power, ground, we've got one, two, three, four pairs of wires. So this is a six bit because one of these is clocked, so there's only three of them. So think two, four, six. <clears throat> um, it's got a six bit cable single channel for an LED backlight with a 40 pin connector. Here's our next one. So again, a 40 pin connector, it's LED, there's the additional connector for the controller. And we've got one, two, three, four, five this time. So this one here is the additional one. That tells me that this is a cable for a single channel 8 bit controller. Okay, so that's going to give us 16.7 million colors, but it's probably going to be in the resolution of about 1366 by 768 or something. Right, so this cable is a 30 pin connector. It's bigger than the 40 pin, um, and it, but it's a different type of connector, usually used with bigger displays that are using CCFL backlighting. The cable here is a 6 bit cable, and you can see there's a gap here where the 8 bit cable would go. So you've got one, two, three um, for your color signals and horizontal vertical sync. And then you've got this one for the clock. There's a gap and then there's one, two, three more ground and then another clock. And then there's a, the last one's not filled in. One thing to note, there's a little triangle here that normally would indicate pin one. It's wrong. They've plugged these things together the, with the, this connector the wrong way around. Pay no close attention to where the ground is and where the little dot is. This little painted dot, it's usually being used to indicate where they've actually assembled it to pin one. So in the assembly line, they probably haven't cared and they've just put them together however they picked up the connector. Not very clever, but that's what they've done. And then here we have, so this one was the 30 pin connector. This one is now a 40 pin connector. So back to that old style. I think I've got a slightly, nope, don't. Right, and this one is six bit again, where you've got one, two, three, ground, and the clock, and then space, and then one, two, three, ground, and then another clock, and then another space. So this is also a two channel six bit LVDS data feed going to a 40 pin connector with an LED this time, not a CFL connector. Now, just to give some context to this, here are all the four that I have laid next to each other. So this is a single lane six bit. This one is an 8-bit. This next one is a two-channel 6-bit. This one is also a 6-bit. Um, you can see they've just wired the power slightly different. If this was an 8-bit, then this one and this one, this one and this one would all be filled in, a bit like the way this is, but then repeated for the second half. All right. Now, here are the two connectors side by side so that you can actually get an idea of the difference in size. This one is probably at least 50% larger than the 40 pin. This one's 30 pin, this one's 40 pin. Okay, that's just a slightly better view. And then here are the three control boards that I've got. And you can see the first one, that, which is why I showed you in the first video, HDMI, VGA, couple of composite inputs. The next one I've got is got DVI, VGA, HDMI, no composites. It's got an audio in, it's got an audio amplifier and speaker outputs or a headphone output. So a little bit more flexible if you don't want composite video. And then this last one, you can see we've got VGA, HDMI, no DVI. We've got audio and composite video in. We've got head, uh, audio in, audio out. We have a USB connector in this case. 
we have a TV tuner, and we also have a speaker output as well for driving speakers. And this allows you to pick up um, terrestrial uh, TV signals with an antenna and tune them in. So this would make a very flexible board. It's a weird shape for mounting. It's just got two mounting holes. Uh, it's quite long and thin, but nevertheless, much more flexible. And this one, because it's got the USB, makes it very, very easy to reprogram. And that's pretty much it as far as those are concerned. So the question now is, how do you program these? So what I have is I've got one ready to program. If I just plug it in. This is a USB stick. I've just plugged it into the computer. So what you do is you download that zip file that I showed you. Here we go. So here it is. If you open this up, you can see I haven't bought that yet. Um, it's got quite a few different panel um, setups already in it. And if you're not sure, if it doesn't, if you don't find one that may, meets exactly your panel, then find one that says general. So we've got 1024, 768, 800 by 600, 1680 by 1050, 1366 by 768. So that's what I'd use for most of my panels. And if you look inside each of these, you'll see that there's three files. You just copy these to an empty USB stick formatted with FAT32 and just put it in the root directory. And then when you power up the board with that plugged in, it will automatically program that for you. And there, if you've got your cable correctly chosen, then your display should just fire up nicely. So we'll have a little go with that. Right now I've got my programming set up for my 1366 by 768. I think that's the one I've got here. And I've got a test video too. That, oh, that was the other thing with these really cool, uh, these boards, all right? They will actually play MP3s and things as well. You just plug in a, a, any, a lot of formats, so MP4. Um, they'll play audio. They'll show you pictures. So very nice little flexible board, this one. But I guess the next thing now is to go try them out. Oh, there's an interesting picture right there. The one picture I didn't have was for a full-blown two-channel 8-bit. That one looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Oh, that's ground four, five. So that one is fully populated, which would tell me that this is a two-lane 8-bit cable. Uh, I think that's given you enough there. Let's go over and get on the bench, and we'll have a look at actually getting these things working. Okay, here we are with the uh, 1366 by 768 display and we're using the original controller that I had in the first video just as a starting point. Now all we have here is basic menu capabilities. So that's pretty much it for that one and it comes with this controller, uh, little remote control. Now the only thing about this is that this particular one is set for 1366 by 768 displays only. So if I wanted to change that, I would have to use one of those binary files that I showed you and reprogram this. And I don't have a programmer, so not easy to do. Anyway, let's bring up the next controller and see what happens. Okay, so for this board, for some reason, I can't get anything out of it. It does light up the LCD display, and no matter what I do, I can't get any of the inputs. I've tried DVI, VGA, HDMI input, and none of them will uh, bring the display up. And obviously, we just saw it working with the other board. This is supposed to be configured with um, 1366 by 768 as well. Now, I do notice that the, the board is slightly different to the one that's in the picture of what I ordered. So, I don't know whether maybe they just accidentally sent the wrong one to me. I'll have to follow up with Banggood to find out what happened there. Um, so can't do anything with this one right now. So let's move on to the other one. So I guess the remaining one to try is this one, which is what I have the highest hopes for anyway. So let's get this plugged in. So we have our infrared. We've got our full remote control. Little keypad doohickey thing. So let's plug in our HDMI from the Raspberry Pi and hopefully we've still got something on the display and it hasn't timed out. We'll restart it otherwise. Plug in our power. 
So we've got our little red light to say that there's power connected, but it's not on. So we'll just hit power. Display's gone blue. Okay, that's come up exactly the same way as the other panel did at the moment, but I'm pretty sure, in fact, I know it's not programmed for this display. So let me grab a USB, the USB stick and we'll power it up and reprogram it. Okay, be right back. Okay, USB stick. I put the files on for a 1366 by 768 display. We just plug it into the USB port. And what we'll do is we'll just cycle the power. And what should happen if it's programming is this will go on red and then it'll start flashing. It takes a little bit over a minute to do its thing. So we'll just power it up. So it comes on red there. It should start flashing in a moment. There we go. So it's programming now. It should go fast. We'll leave it for a minute even after it started flashing quickly. There we go. It started flashing quickly now. We'll give it another 30 seconds just to be sure because they say to leave it for at least a minute. Now even though I've got um, an 8-bit two-channel cable hooked up, the display here should ignore it completely. Okay, that should be good. Now we'll just power cycle this again. I know this display was working earlier on this resolution, so let's just try going. Maybe that is problem with the cable. Let's just try that and see if it will put back what we had before. Shouldn't make any difference because just you know the extra wires just simply won't be connected. Let's plug that in and power it up again. Ah, I guess it might matter. Maybe it just ignore, caused a problem with the other one. Okay, so now we're powered up on this one. We, we used this cable before with the other controller, so we know that that other controller is still an issue. All right, so first things we're noticing here is that our language is in Chinese. That's not what we want. And also, um, we don't have our input. So the first thing we should be able to do is change the input. So I can make out the HDMI because I guess that's common. So we'll go down to there, press enter. Okay, so one thing is obviously very apparent here is that this is not what we should be seeing. We also have the wrong language. So first thing to fix here is the language because I'm not able to do this without that. So we'll go to the settings. I happen to know which ones are which here. So we we'll go to the settings, press enter. Now I know the first thing here is language. So we're trying to see English come up here. So that's not English, nor is that. We'll also see some of these other ones badly come up. That looks like Russian, that's not English. Okay, that looks like it. Return, exit, adjust, move, English. All right, that's what we want. So we'll say OK, and we'll press exit for that. So now we're in English, but what we need now here is to change it. I happen to know what's wrong with this. This default, because I've just programmed it, is in 8-bit mode, and this is what, it's only a 6-bit screen. So it's trying to output colors that this just doesn't support, so we have to change that. And the way you do that is you just hit the menu button on the remote, so there's menu, and you go 1147, and it brings up a special configuration area. So what we need to do is go down to panel settings here, and we need to change it from, where is it, here, 8-bit mode, we need to change that to be 6-bit mode. It's a whole bunch of other things you can play with here, but the one we're interested in to make this work properly is down here. So you've got Visa for the, for the map, but the color depth here is what we want to change. So we'll change that to, that's 10 bits, that's even worse. That's 12 bits, so this thing supports up to 12-bit screens. 
And now we're back to six bits, and you can see now the screen has gone exactly where we want it to be. So we press enter, and we're done. We press menu, I think, to get out of that. Um, see, here's where you can have the software upgrade. So if I put a USB stick in here now, I could go down to software upgrade and tell it to do a USB update, and it would actually load from the USB key and do another update. We've already done it, so we don't need to. And if your screen resolution was wrong, then that would fail as well. Now, I happen to have a 1600 by uh, 1050 display down here. So I'm going to leave it set up like this. I'm going to grab that one, plug it in. It's not going to work to start with. Uh, it also uses the, um, the two-channel LVDS control. Um, and then we'll plug it in, see it doesn't work. We'll do a software update, see it does work. Be right back. Okay, this is the 1600 by 900, sorry, it's not 1050, it's 1600 by 900 screen, uh, still 15.6 inches. Uh, this requires a two-channel 6-bit cable, which is what I've now hooked up to it. And if I just power this up without upgrading the firmware, we'll see that it probably won't even work. It might do some weird things on the screen. Let's power it up and see what happens. Is it the same signal from the Raspberry Pi? So we've got nothing, nothing else has changed. Let me just recycle the uh, Raspberry Pi just in case it's uh, turned itself off on the display. So it should be booting up. If anything, it should come up with the Pi logos up here. And as you can see, absolutely nothing. So what we need to do is we need to upgrade this. So if I now unplug the power, I'll put the USB stick in. We'll do the exact same thing as we did before. So there we are plugged in with the USB stick. And if you watch this, it should come on red. In a moment, it'll start flickering. The Pi's already booted and there was nothing on the screen, so. There we go. It's going to do the same cycle before, but it's now the firmware for the 1600 by 900 um, 6 bit display using a two channel LVDS feed. So you can see, even though this board might be a little bit more expensive than the other ones, um, you, one board does pretty much all up to 1900 by, sorry, up to 1920 by 1080 or 12, even 1200, I think. Um, 8 bit at 60 hertz. It won't do 120 hertz, but it will do up to 60 hertz, 1920 by 1080 or, or slightly higher. So that's done. Let's give it another 30 seconds just to make sure we've cleared the programming cycle. What you're doing is you're probably programming this flash memory right here. And when you're going through with the USB, nice and easy to do, that's for sure. Okay, that should be long enough. So let's just power this down now. Shouldn't matter about leaving in the USB stick, so we'll just leave it there. It won't reprogram again, so we just plug the power back in again. As you can see, the power defaults to being off. We'll give it a second to boot, and we should be able to bring the power up. Now, theoretically, there we go. See, I hadn't touched the Raspberry Pi, but I just changed the resolution settings on here. Now, of course, we've got the same issues. We have to change it from Chinese to English. So let's do that quickly. Um, go to the settings, enter, until we find the English. There we go, enter. And let's escape from that. So this is defaulting to the TV tuner input. But now let's go to um, menu 1147 and we'll change it to be 8-bit. Panel settings. We'll go down to the visa and we'll change it to be 6 bits and we'll say enter. Exit from there and we do input, go back down to HDMI, and voila! We're now running at 800 by 600, which is awesome. Now this is directly on the Raspberry Pi as the primary screen, so here's my mouse. I can probably go in here, because you can see that the this is actually slightly over scanning for whatever reason. 
So if I come in here and change the, I'm probably going to be able to change the settings. It's probably driving it at um, 1920 by 1080. So go to configuration, configure screens. The other one was downscaling. This one doesn't seem to be doing so well. Yeah, so 1920 by 1080 is what we're currently driving it at. Let's just go to 1600 by 900. It'll probably, it is downscaling, but it's going slightly off the screen. Um, so now if we do that, it should fix itself and be fitting in the screen. Oh, perfect, beautiful. And there we have it, 1900 by, sorry, 1600 by 900 resolution on the Raspberry Pi, six bit color, so 256,000 colors. Uh, if you wanted to have more colors, of course, this panel wouldn't do. You would have to use a different panel. So what I have, but I've got to order another controller because I don't have the right LVDS, uh, sorry, cathode, cold cathode drivers. I need to zoom out for this one because it's a big screen. All right, this one is a 20 inch panel. I have stolen it out of my um, <laughs> good display. And you can see here it's using cold cathode. These are the connectors for the four cold cathode LED, uh, backlight drivers. And this one has the 30 pin connector just tucked in under here. So whilst I may be able to get a little bit of this up and running, um, it's still not going to do very well. It's a pretty heavy display. Um, came out of a um, uh, Acer, even though it said it was a different make on it. I think it's made by um, a different company, but it's, you know, there's the front bezel for it um, with the controls. You could configure this to use the this board and the backlight controls you could wire to the um, power supply that's in the, in the monitor. So you could modify the back of the monitor to have this mounted there instead of the existing controller which only has VGA input. And that's a little thing I might look at doing for this because the back of the monitor, yeah, right, it just has a big cutout for where the inputs and things would go. This is where the power would go in. Uh, see, it just has the VGA input. And the unit that goes with this one is here. So that's the back of it. So there's your VGA input. You could take this controller out and you could put this one in its place. Um, this power supply here has the high voltage drivers over here already for the cold cathode displays. They all come out at the edge here, right? So you could use those existing ones. And the signals that come from here, from this controller board, you could disconnect them and connect them to the outputs from the new controller board to turn the cold cathode displays on and off and do the dimming and things like that for brightness. Um, which would work very well. And you could probably even tap in um, maybe this set of control buttons um, to use. You'd have to do a bit of wiring to get it hooked up correctly instead of this one. Of course, you've got the remote control as well. So, you know, uh, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one only has one, two, three, four, five. So you wouldn't have everything available straight off of here if you use this one. This one would fit the front panel with the existing buttons, which was what would be nice. Um, anyway, lots of options for a big one. Anyway, I'm not going to do this right now because I don't have the um, four LVDS. Sorry, blah, I don't have the four CCFL driver module. I only have one that has a um, single output. I also don't have an 8-bit um, panel driver. Uh, sorry. I also don't have an 8-bit LVDS cable two-channel. So there's a few things I need to get before I can try that one using this same system. Anyway, so I hope you like that. I hope that made things a lot clearer for you to understand how you can hook these up, uh, plug it into a Raspberry Pi. I mean, literally, I'm just taking the HDMI output. This is an, a Raspberry Pi 4, so I've got the small HDMI output, but it could be a Raspberry Pi 1, 2, or 3, doesn't really matter. Um, using the standard HDMI outputs, you're just feeding it straight into here. 
and that's all you need to do. You're not using the um, display output, the DVS, DVS, I think it's display digital video signal. Yeah, DVS, I think it is, that comes out on here. It's a completely different signaling technology. Um, so using the HDMI out into one of these boards and then up to a reused um, laptop panels, which is what these are, or, you know, once I get the right cable, um, using one of those great big um, panels from a full computer display, including case, you, you know, you, then you can get a lot more use out of one, even though the, you know, the old monitors, you can pick them up dirt cheap at thrift stores with just VGA inputs, put one of these panels onto it, maybe not this one, but even, you know, even this first one that I got, which is just a little square one, would be perfectly fine for a lot of them. Just make sure if you're getting this one, you get it for the right resolution um, and the right bit, bit depth. Um, if you get this one, of course, you get a lot more flexibility, but you might have to drill a few extra holes. Um, and once I figure out what is going on with this controller, because it should have worked technically, then um, you know you get quite a few different options. And there are other options too. And there are boards that will even display, uh, drive 2K and 4K screens. That's a whole nother story. I don't have any of those resolution screens that I'm willing to rip apart to try this. So anyway, I uh, hope that simplified things. I hope even though this went on a little bit longer, I think I kept it at a much simpler level um, to show you how to pick your connector, pick your controller board, hook it up, uh, reprogram this one. I, I think given these three, two, three boards right now, um, given the fact that both this one and this one, if you wanted to change the resolution on them, um, you have to get a special programmer that programs through this uh, VGA connector, right? Now you can make your own, but the software is hard to find. The binary files, I've got some, but I haven't tried any. It, you know, it's fraught with risks, I guess, but you've just seen how easy it was for me to reconfigure this one to work with um, 1366 by 768 straight to a 1600 by 900 display and as soon as I get the right cable and the um, high voltage CCFL driver board then we will be able to try one of these great big 20 inch and 24 inch displays. I'm not sure if I want to pull apart my 24 inch display but I might because the one I've got here has already got DVI, HDMI and VGA inputs so I don't know if I really want to be pulling that one apart. I might just take it apart enough to uh, drive the display just to test it, but we'll see. Either way, though, we will, and I've already pulled it apart, try the 20-inch um, PC display. And we'll upgrade it to use one of these. Now, the other thing I'm going to be doing in future videos is I'm going to set up one of these with a... Um, Going to make a box for it. We're going to make it into maybe a um, magic mirror, maybe giving us your schedules and things like that, or um, you know, showing your calendars. We'll, we'll do something fun with it where we'll put it in a box. The other thing I want to do is for a um, smaller panel. This one's a little harder because it's got so many cables, but one of the 1366 by 768 panels is actually try and see if I can drive it through a network cable, maybe. Uh, somewhere between three and five meters because it requires twisted pair. It is differential drive. So the specification does allow up to about five meters for a lower resolution display to still be able to maintain it. So theoretically it should work and that allows us to maybe have a control box, all this stuff, somewhere else and just have something really, really thin. I mean, look how thin that is anyway, sitting on a wall, which will be kind of cool. Anyway, that's a future video. Okay, before I go, there is one thing I mentioned about this board that I haven't shown you working. I mean, I've, you know, I've shown you on the other board having the composite video input, so okay, fine, that does work. Um, I don't have a TV tuner down here, like an antenna for the input for the TV tuner, but what I can show you is its ability to play media files. So I've d deliberately disconnected all of my video inputs. There's none. All I've got is the USB stick and I've got a little 
um, media file on there. So if I change the input using the remote to um, media right here, we've got the option of looking at photos, playing music, uh, watching a movie or looking at a text file. Now I don't have two speakers that can plug in here at the same time, but just here's a little speaker I robbed out of an old piece of equipment. So I'm just going to plug this into one of the channels of the speaker connector right there. Okay, that's done. Now let's go pick a, I put a movie file on here, a movie file. So here it is. And we'll just press enter and see what happens. Well, I haven't even had, got it, don't even have to do that. It's already demonstrating it. All right, so I'll press that to play it full screen. Uh, let's get rid of the, so 1920 by 1080 display, um, H.264 encoded, AAC video, 44 kilohertz. Um, let's get rid of that. So we've got a full screen. You see, it's, it's, it's on a loop right now, so it's playing um, quite fine. This is actually from a fashion show that my daughter had done uh, as a graduation for um, fashion university that she went to. Yeah, it's just a leather jacket that she had designed. Anyway, this is a video file of the runway that she had to do. The point is, it's playing the video file on the speaker with the audio as well. And I don't have any other inputs. Right, so you just plug in a USB stick, you can do your media, uh, pictures, music, videos, whatever. So would form quite a nice little um, center for an entertainment system, little one for uh, camping. You could probably run this all off a battery. I mean, it's just 12 volts, right? Uh, very easily. Now, one of the other things I will, I am going to do with this as well is I have some uh, model aircraft uh, car equipment for quadcopters and things, and they have uh, some cameras that have composite video output and then transmit it over a 5.8 gigahertz link to a receiver. So this would also make a great monitor for something like that. So one of my future videos, not too far away, I'm going to build up a little um, demonstration of how you could use one of these with one of these boards, maybe a simpler one, and use it as a monitor for your um, FPV cameras. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that last little bit. Now I'm out of here. Bye.